What is up, everybody? How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you doing today? I wasn't talking to you. Oh. I was I was talking to them. You can't talk to me? I will in a bit. Calm calm your horses. I'm here too. <laughs> I I know you have feelings too. Um, but anyways, happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to the Fantasy Tap. My name is Michael. I'm going to talk to you now. This is John. John, how are you doing today? I'm allowed to speak now. Yes. All right, perfect. So, hi, I'm doing great. Thanks, everyone, for coming out. Uh, I'm really excited for this episode. It's going to be an absolutely great one. We have our rankings together, and it is going to be our running clap, back clap rankings. And I am so excited because... We have a little bit of a conflict of it, conflict of uh, ideas. Of John likes conflict. I don't enjoy conflict, but John loves conflict. When I know I'm right, I'm right. Uh, so and he's wrong. So <laughs> very rarely, but uh, we do have our running back rankings today, and we're going to be going off with as many as we can. Yep. So today and tomorrow, or, or I'm sorry, Thursday. Tomorrow, uh, today and Thursday, we're going to be going through our top 24 uh, running backs. So we're going to get through as many uh, today. We're going to start with the one, spot number one. and then Surprise, work the- surprise, who might it be? Ooh. Who is going one in the running back position in 2020? Antonio Gibson. Snipe me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we're going to be working our way down from one to 24. Um And that'll be, you know, we'll finish it up uh, on Thursday. Um, But anyways, let's uh, get into it uh, today real quick to do a show overview. Um, We're going to get into news. A little bit of news? Yeah, a little, a lot of bit of news. A lot of bit of news. And then, like we said, we're going to get into our running back rankings. Um, but one thing I do want to say uh, before before we get into that, uh, we really appreciate the support so far. You guys have been amazing. Um, it really, you know, brings a tear to my eye every time I see our uh, our downloads and stuff like that for being such a new podcast. We, we really appreciate it. Yeah, really. Thank you to everyone that's been in tuning in, uh, checking us out, downloading, listening. Uh, it's nice to have everyone there. Thank you, everyone who joined our listener league. It was yes. it was it was uh-huh. interesting to see who who we really had join in. Uh, I guess you know this little this helmet on the table here. Uh, they didn't join for us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I would I would have joined just for this table, but hopefully, you tuned into the podcast and you realized we're we're not that bad. So, thank you again. Yeah, uh, we're solid. Uh, average. We're good. Average. Hey. But, uh, yeah, so appreciate the love. Uh, continue to share us wherever you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can do anything, make sure you do. They can. They can do anything. They can just, you know, uh, write a review or um, give us little stars, five preferably. Like John said last episode, if there's any negative reviews, send them directly to us and we will fix it. Um, but, yeah, if you guys could just, you know, uh, rate and uh, – and, and review, we'd, we'd really, really appreciate it. Um, but anyways, let's get into our news. I like this first story. Yeah, it's a good one. Give it to him. So, as reported, uh, Melvin Gordon, you know. Wait, why do you like this story? You're struggling. I'm not a huge Melvin fan. <laughs> so, Melvin Gordon, uh, new guy in Denver, Mile High City. He is actually struggling with that Mile High Altitude. Uh, it was reported by ESPN, and he's still expected to start week one. But as you know, it, it's it's hard to breathe when you're trying to run the ball that much up in uh, up in Denver. Yeah, John, how high above the sea level is Denver? Well, they call it the Mile High City. Uh, so without me being exactly accurate, no, I need exact numbers. I would just assume that it is five thousand two hundred and eighty feet, being that it is exactly a mile. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. I don't. I mean, I don't know how many feet in a mile. In a mile. Oh, really? Nope. Oh, wow. Yep. So, how, um, many, how many meters in a kilometer? That's a good question. Ask somebody. I don't know. It's a Ask thousand them. kilo thousand. I get that. Okay, I wasn't sure. I was kidding about that. Just making sure. How many inches are in a kilometer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I stumped him there. I stumped John Stump. 3,106. That's probably close. Um, But anyways, like you said, Melvin Gordon struggling with the altitude uh, there. 
Uh, he's still expected to be the week one starter. I'm not really worried about it. He will, you know, get acclimated within the next couple weeks and be fine. Don't have him very highly ranked. Um, but anyways, let's move on to uh, the next story here. Yeah. Ooh, it's sad for this guy. He's, you know, coming coming into uh, his uh, second year and he tore his they think he tore his ACL, and that's that's Jalen Hurd, the wide receiver uh, for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, he missed his entire rookie year uh, with a back injury. So, and, you know, if he tore his ACL. He's getting ready to miss his whole sophomore season. And he showed promise, especially with Debo Samuel out, you know, he, ha- he was about to have a lot of opportunity. Yeah, he was getting ready to show that he's someone who – can be a trustworthy receiver in San Francisco's offense. Uh, it sucks because, I mean, at least you got a signing bonus, but not being able to do anything for a team into your second year, uh, it unless you can really come out and hopefully come out healthy next year, it, it's hard to keep that roster spot when they've already started signing new players. Mm-hmm. They drafted Brandon Ayuk. They drafted Brandon Ayuk. They added Chris uh, – I'm sorry, the Jets added Chris Hogan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I, <coughs> they, I mean, they have um, Trent Ta- uh, Trent Trent Taylor. Trent Taylor, yeah, they do. Have, Trent they have Taylor. Trent Taylor there. All right, just I was gonna call him Trent Smith, but I don't even think. I, <laughs> I mean, there's probably a Trent Smith somewhere in the world that may play football. Hey, good for him. <laughs> Hopefully, you make it in the league, bud. So, um, but anyways, so that is a uh, piece of unfortunate news. Um, and then our next piece of news, which is getting me, I, I'm cooling off now. It, it kind of scares me. A.J. Green <laughs> tweaked his hamstring in practice. I was starting to get hot on him, especially for where he was going. Um, But he, he, he missed the rest of the uh, practice and, and watched it from the sideline. So that does scare me. Uh, John, are you – are you is that going to cool you off a little bit from A.J. Green? Um, Actually, no. I kind of – and I hate to say it. <clears throat> But even when I projected him out for 16, 16 games this year, I I kind of took into consideration his injury risk. And so I, I kind of had the mindset that even if he doesn't get his full amount of receptions uh, based on a 16-game season, they're still not going to force feed him like uh, you would expect. So, I mean, realistically, right now I have him playing uh, starting as a wide receiver 36. But I have Tyler Boyd at the wide receiver 38. Uh, so, I mean, I have Tyler Boyd making up in that ex- that that injury risk already and thriving from it, but he's someone that even if you even if you roster him at the end of like the fifth fifth round, fourth round, I mean, if you can get AJ Green a little bit later, uh, he's someone who it, when he plays, he's gonna get a lot. You just don't want to be relying on him as someone as you like your wide receiver one. Uh, as wide receiver two, he's good because you can fill that spot with someone else on your roster. Right. Obviously, hopefully you drafted better towards the end. Uh, yeah. but he's he's currently going as wide receiver 24 and uh, ADP 57.8 in a standard league. So it, it's kind of scary. Odell Beckham's going right behind him, and DJ Moore's right in front of him. Literally, like on, on ADP and wide receiver. So I, I'd grab OBJ. Uh, yeah, I think I'd grab OBJ there too. Marquise Brown's in the same uh, range as well. But like I said, that he did tweak his hamstring. Just keep an eye on it. Um, kind of see what happens going forward. Um, and you know, we'll uh, we'll keep updating you if we have it. If there's anything to be concerned about, um, does look does concern me a little bit though. But anyways, uh, next piece of news: Ravens are hosting Des Bryant for a workout. Tom Pelissero reported that, and that's pretty interesting. He didn't play last year. No, I mean, again, he was someone who was injured uh, in training camp of last season, right after signing with the Saints. So, uh, you're are you are you still grabbing him, knowing that he's just coming off an injury? He's someone who's getting to that older point. I mean, are you staying completely away from him, even on a flyer opportunity where he's going probably undrafted? So you're basically grabbing him if you're grabbing him at all on a last round pick or even a waiver waiver wire pickup. I'm assuming a lot of people are about to spend their fab their fat budget just picking up him. I mean, 
Is he someone you're looking at? No. Do I need to check my dynasty leagues and just put in a no. two dollar bid on him because uh, you put I mean, that one in? Put a, put a one or two dollar bid on him and see if you get him. Don't do any more than that, especially if um, your budget's less than a hundred dollars in fab. Um, but no, I mean uh, he's not on the team. Even if he goes there, I don't really think he's going to have a big fantasy impact. If I'm in a redraft league, I'm definitely staying away from him. And if you, you know, are thinking about it because you know they're a little bit, of, excuse me, a little bit of hype um, on him, I'd rather grab Antonio Brown because hey. you know we know he'll produce. He does. He is going to miss eight games. I was going to say eight games. That's that's seventy five percent of a fantasy season before you hit the. Or you hit the playoffs. So you're missing a large chunk of your season with that pickup. But he's, he's gonna he's if going you draft undrafted. yeah, if you draft well, make the playoffs, have him in the playoffs, and great. I mean, and but I'm just saying Antonio Brown is a name I would pick up before I picked up Des Bryant. Okay. Um so and like I said, we don't even know if he's gonna be signed or not. If he is, if he is, does that how how does that affect Marquise Brown or uh Mark Andrews? Uh Honestly, I don't think it affects either of them too heavily. While I see Des Bryant actually being a really talented receiver, I, I think that you're still going to see him being older. I mean, he's not extremely old for an NFL receiver, but he is on that older scale. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're seeing someone who's going to be able to catch the ball. He's efficient. He knows how to run routes. He knows how to read a defender. Um, you saw him excel with Dallas. I just... I don't think he's going to get enough targets and be on the field enough to where it's actually going to affect Mark Andrews or Marquise Brown to the point. The only real factor is Lamar's only throwing so many, throw any passes. Right. Uh, so you're only going to get so many opportunities for him and the rest of the team. Yep. I would agree there. I don't think it, it uh, affects either of them, you know, too much. They need a wide receiver too anyway. And I think that might actually take a little bit of pressure off of Marquise Brown, especially so, yeah. I mean, it could it could help help them a little bit. Um, but anyways, uh, also, to let you guys know, unfortunately, Nick Chubb is being evaluated for a concussion. Um, Andrew Gribble posted that on Twitter today. Um, I haven't seen any updates on that, but if there is an update and if he does have a concussion, obviously he'll have to go through the concussion protocol, miss some camp and or miss some time in camp. Uh, but we'll we'll keep you updated on that as well. I don't really think that has too much fantasy impact at this point you know we're still three weeks out i believe three yeah about three weeks out maybe maybe a little more give or take uh before the season so i mean he should be fine he was there last year it's not like he's a rookie or anything like that um and then deandre hopkins missed the last two practices uh he missed those with a tweaked hamstring um josh weinfuss posted on twitter uh, regarding that, um, but he should be back soon. It is something to keep in mind, or just to, to just to, just to watch because those soft uh, tissue injuries do s tend to nag. Yeah, they they linger on, and mm -hmm. then you'll see a player missing a game here, a game there, and then you'll see you'll see them just sit on that injury question mark for the whole season, or even for the first half, and that's not something you want with an early receiver especially when you have a little bit more security, uh, possibly just going one lower. Uh, and, you know, just something you want to pay attention to. Yeah, see, see if it... See when he comes to camp, when yeah. he starts practicing regularly. Listen to what the coaches have to say, but also take into account that it's camp time. Everyone's getting injured. Everyone just put on pads. Coaches are happy. They want to be happy with the offenses and the draft picks they've made. You've got to pay attention to what is being said and kind of take it for granted and take it with a grain of salt and understand like, okay, this coach just put his butt on the line by drafting this player early. He needs to say he's getting a lot of work. He looks amazing. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of coach speak going on right now, especially, you know, it's beginning camp. T uh, teams are putting on pads. They're going to talk people up. Uh, so keep an eye out for that as well. Don't believe it all. Uh, but, you know, there is some, there is some truth to some coach speak. But not all of it. So, um, but anyways, just keep an eye on DeAndre Hopkins. You know, kind of see what happens when he gets back. We'll let you know when he does. Uh, dang, John, you're moving the table over here. <laughs> you got to watch this on YouTube. We store a couple extra beers underneath to uh, to to move on to next. Um, 
we get big, I'm going to buy a refrigerator, a little tiny one. <laughs> a, a little a tiny. Little, a little $20 refrigerator if you guys uh, want to. One of those little cool ones, yeah. yeah. So, um, and then our last piece of news uh, is, which is pretty cool, something we need in this time, you know, of COVID and everything like that. Uh, oh, this made me happy to see. Yeah. The Chiefs final, have finalized and submitted a plan to uh, – for, for fans at 22% capacity in their stadium. So that's that's pretty cool, you know. You, obviously, you want to be as safe to, safe as possible, but it's it, it's nice to see that we might be getting back to normalcy at the same time, you know, trying to be as safe as possible. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's really happy to see. We want to see more teams open up while being safe, uh, 22%, you know, that's Pretty solid. You know, a lot of t- a lot of stadiums can hold 60,000 to 80, you know, tens of thousands of people. So 22%, uh, you're still going to have a lot of people able to see the games and uh, <coughs> be able to participate. Chief Stadium actually holds 76,416 people. So whatever 22% of that is, that's how many people are going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising facts. Yeah. But yeah. So, you know, at least some people are going to be able to enjoy football. Uh but just keep in mind, they are saying hoping for. We are hoping that they are right. But and uh, hopefully the NFL doesn't have to crack down on anything and absolutely regulate the fact that people can't show up. But it it'll be fine. Doesn't so matter. Doesn't matter. I, no, doesn't I matter. got. I calculated. I pulled out my calculator. I watched you calculate. Sixteen thousand eight hundred and eleven point five two people. Point five two. That's a big number there. So anyway. That's what we got for the NFL news. Did I scare you there? No, a little bit of, you know, those numbers. I watched you calculate them. I get it. But you, you it get is, math? But, you know, six, you know, it's a good amount of people. Good. They're going to make some money off of it. Glad you get math, John. <laughs> but anyways, um, let's get into our uh, 2020 consensus running back rankings. But before we do that, actually, because I forgot to talk about it at the very beginning, um, Purple Haze. It's today's beer of the day. B-O-T-D, baby. Uh, the beer of the day is Purple Haze, the Raspberry Lager by Abita Brewing Company. They're out of Covington, Louisiana. You ever had them crawdads <laughs> out of no. Louisiana? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. Uh, Me either. I've never been there. But I know you're supposed to suck the tail if you're real. Yeah, there's a gas station right up the road, though, that sells pretty fire crawdads, so. It scares me. Gas station up the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you find the best food. I, technically, actually, it used to be a gas station. Now it's a restaurant. It doesn't make it any better. So... That's what we're drinking on. Like I said, it's a raspberry lager. Very good. John's on his second. He's got a third underneath. I've got a second underneath. I already drank one before this. So it's a good beer, obviously. Kind of like it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> really nice, easy drink. Uh, so really surprising. I didn't really didn't want to get into it too hard, but they just go down easy. Very. So um, anyways, like I said, let's get into our... Uh, 2020 consensus rankings. John, you want to tell them what a consensus ranking is in case they don't know? So anyone that doesn't know, a consensus ranking is going to be my ranking and Michael's ranking here uh, averaged out together so that if one of us is super high on one person and the other person's super low on them, it averages out so you guys don't get screwed. Yeah. Because <laughs> realistically, you know, I, we obviously have players that I like more than him. Uh, you'll see it a lot more in the quarterback section. Uh, but well, and the running back. I mean, we've got a few that. Yeah. That so, so basically, the consensus ranking is going to be our average of our both both of our projections for that p- player, and hopefully, uh, I mean, we've got some really good ones. Very, very. Oh, so I I Where's actually the beer. Oh yeah, it's harder to, harder to harder to grab than you thought it was, huh? Uh, yeah, it is. Unplug my headset. Yeah, I know. I ripped your headset out. I'm sorry, John. For a second, I actually sounded good. <laughs> but uh, so with our one spot, you know, it's a really hard question first off. But uh, what's going to end up happening is everyone knows it. I don't know if you guys play fantasy football. But the first player going off 
The Obviously, they play fantasy football. They're listening to. Obviously, us. the first person going off the board is going to be Christian McCaffrey. Uh, he's someone who last year put up over a thousand rushing and receiving yards uh, again, and so he's basically the Carolina's offense runs through Christian McCaffrey. Uh, even with Teddy Bridgewater coming into them this season, you're still going to see him finding his safety valve there. And the addition of Matt Rule, the the new uh, the whole yeah. the entire. I mean, new they have a whole whole new offense being built around that the team that's existing there. Uh, so you're going to see Christian getting a huge workload. They, he's shown his talent. You know that he's he's comfortable there. I mean, absolute easy number one for almost anyone. Do you think he's the best? I, we're not talking fantasy right now. Do you think he's the best Absolutely running back? Absolutely not. Like pure running back? Best running back in the league? Take out his pass catching ability. Absolutely not. Really? Really. Well, but I mean, that's... I, I know it's a, it's a hard factor. Uh, it's hard. He's he's great. I don't think he'd be doing as great on a team that doesn't need to rely on their their exceptionally talented running back. Uh, I mean, is personally, I think the best rusher, the best pure running back in the league, is going to be Derrick Henry or uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Mm-hmm. And personally, I'm a little lower in Zeke than you are. Oh yeah, well that's one of those players. And and part Actually, of the re- yeah, and part of the reason is because I actually think that. Dallas doesn't need to rely on Zeke as much as the Panthers need to rely on Christian. But we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I think he, I think he is the best running back. I mean, I get he may not he's not the best pure runner, but to somebody to put in that position, I mean, obviously he showed it last year. But anyways, obviously Christian McCaffrey. If you're at the number one spot, take him. If you're at the number two spot and he falls to you, take, take him. him. If he falls any farther than that, take him. Get in a better league because obviously. No, Actually, stay, unless stay it's in, in a money league. Stay in that league and <laughs> win everybody's dollar because that needs to be yours if he falls to you any lower than the two or the three. Yeah. It is possible some people take our next guy over him, but... Who's that next guy? It's a speculation. Um, <clears throat> Actually, our second guy is going to be Saquon Barkley, mm-hmm. another person who's an, a, a super efficient runner, uh, working with an offense whose receiver co- receiving core is not the strongest... Uh, new quarterback, so they're going to be relying on that running back. Uh, Daniel Jones has only been there for one full year. They have an incredible offensive line, uh, not incredible, but they have a. They have been building that. They, they have been they building their offensive, offensive line. line they they just spent their first round pick on uh, an offensive guard or tackle. Yeah, it was a tackle. It was. Um, Is he going to be playing Andrew, tackle though? Andrew Thomas, I believe, is his name. I thought so. Uh, so yeah, Andy they, Thomas. They, they're investing in that offensive line to protect Daniel Jones, to help block for uh, Saquon Barkley. And with that pass catching ability in any sort of half point PPR or PPR league, you're going to get someone who's easily going to be at least a two or a three in any sort of dynasty or any sort of fantasy football league. Uh, hard to keep up with Christian McCaffrey, but easy number two, possibly three. Yeah, I mean, he definitely has that upside. He was injured a couple games last year. Uh, and like you said, he can ca- he can catch the ball out of the backfield. And um, just to, to let you guys know, because I don't think we touched on it before, we are doing our half-point PPR consensus, kind of in the obviously in the middle of a standard and a full PPR. So just to, uh, you know, give you the – the best knowledge or the best advice to use in either league or, or pretty close to it. Um, but, I mean, he's just a, he's just a great uh, all-around back. As long as that offensive line can get fixed up, um, you know, they did get that their – oh, you got something to say? No, waiting oh. for you. Oh, okay. They did get their, you know, the new coaching staff. Um, uh, Jason Garrett is there. Offensive coordinator now, and he obviously had Zeke in Dallas when he was the head coach there, so he knows how to use a a stud running back with huge legs and someone who can run through people Saquads. while also being able to catch the ball. Uh, I mean, in that co- running back conversation, I mean, as much as I think Christian McCaffrey's great, I would actually have Zeke and Saquon above him. I mean, I think if either of them were on Carolina, they'd outproduce what Christian McCaffrey can produce. Uh, and I don't think that Christian would be able to get the same fantasy value or even the same stat lines that he's getting on either Dallas or the Giants. I would disagree with you if he went to Dallas. The Giants, I would agree with you 
Potentially, it'd be a toss-up for me. I mean, Dallas's offensive line is ridiculous, the best in the league. I know they did lose their center, um, but they also have an amazing quarterback. And uh, Zeke definitely has the opportunity there um, to, uh, you know, the the opportunity to put up massive numbers. But anyways, getting back to Saquon, um, one of my favorite parts is, I mean, he had a uh, he had eighty eight point seven percent of their total teams uh running back snaps um while he was healthy right yeah yeah yep. that's, and that's the games he was actually playing that so. finished yeah and that that finished third in the league so i mean obviously he's getting a ton of i mean they don't have really anybody else there Wayne Gallman but um you know so he if he falls to, if and when he falls to you you know at that number 2 spot take him don't let him don't let him pass you up. I know he had a down year, but like we said, you know, he was injured a little bit last year. So. Yeah, I mean, he he finished uh 2018 his rookie season as the wide receiver one in a or running back one in a PPR league. Uh so you're expecting a lot from him especially in a full 16 game season and uh especially when he's not playing a couple of those games maybe hurt. Uh Daniel Jones was someone who found a lot of security in him. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, but anyways, let's move on to our uh, next running back, and this is a surprise, because... This is actually one of my favorite running backs of the year. Yeah, he's definitely up there. John has definitely been convincing me, you know. I changed his mind, guys. Well, a little bit. I mean, I had him at the four and behind Zeke, but I did end up putting him in front um, of Zeke. But Alvin Kamara, I mean, he's coming off of a year where he was injured, he had uh, the knee injury, and, and what do you do? You remember what other injury he had? It was an MCL injury. That's his knee, but he had one more. Uh, I think he no. had an ankle injury as well. Um, but he he came off playing hurt. He didn't have a great season, but now he's back to it. He's fully healthy, and I mean he's primed. He's primed and he's, ready. He's primed to, to go. I mean, you have him coming off of a season where he apparently was hurt after week nine. And he still got 177 rushing attempts on top of 97 passing targets. And in years where he's fully healthy and playing 15, 16 games a year healthy, uh, you're expecting over 100 targets and 194 194 rushing attempts. Uh, Last year, you saw Latavius Murray come in and, you know, win a couple people leagues because he had those two games where he actually got a lot of play. Uh, But when Alvin Kamara was actually in there before he was healthy, you saw all the production come from Kamara and not actually from Latavius Murray. And so hopefully this season he's talking about how he's healthy and you can only take player speak and coach speak with, with so much pureness and you know, you can only believe it so much, but the fact that he waited, he's the type of player. I truly believe that when he tells me like, or when he reports out there that I was injured through the second half of the season, and I'm ready to go this year. It's someone, someone I believe, uh, And so I think this year he's going to be getting those same numbers. Last year you had Drew Brees out for a handful of games. You're going to have hopefully Drew Brees healthy this season. I know he's coming back a little bit older, but, you know, hopefully he recovered from his injury. You should see Alvin Kamara getting an exceptional amount of targets, exceptional, at least 100. I mean, he's got got it ever since his rookie year. Last season was the first season he got under 100. Mm -hmm. So you're expecting him to get at least 100, at least 100 targets for you. Or close, yeah, or, or very close to it, or, cl- or extremely close to it. And in a half point PPR league, that extra fifty points on a, I'm sorry, an extra thirty to twenty five to thirty points based on his receptions, where he's getting eighty to. F- Actually, I'm sorry, he's got three years in a row with eighty one receptions. Yeah, so, that's so get, forty points. So that's forty and a half points in a half point PPR league. Yep. Uh, that's that's four hundred yards rushing. So that that in itself, uh, is going to be absolutely going to be putting you up there and at the three spot i'm so happy grabbing him yeah. uh in one of our we are actually in a podcaster league uh and with we were the fourth pick and we were debating prior to the draft whether we would take zeke or alvin kamara or which one we thought would fall to us and i was heavy on alvin kamara over ezekiel elliott because that pass catching upside in any sort of PPR or uh, half point PPR league is incredible. He came off of a, a bum year and was still a number nine running back in a full point PPR league. So you're getting someone that 
between him and Michael Thomas, the Saints offense nearly runs through them uh, with a little bit of help going to Jared Cook. I mean, you might see Emmanuel Sanders get some love, but not enough to where it's going to hurt anyone on the team. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think Alvin, people who are worried about Latavius Murray and and Alvin Kam- or taking away from Alvin Kamara, they can coexist. Alvin Kamara can still finish as a top four uh, fantasy running back. Uh, I mean, we saw it with Mark Ingram. Uh, yeah, he, and there 28- he finished as the uh, running back four in a PPR, four in a standard league, and um, and then in 2017 he finished as the running back four in a standard league and a running back three in a PPR league. And and like I said, Mark Ingram was there, so they can they can definitely coexist. Uh, last year, I believe I mentioned it uh, last podcast, but even when hurt, he still had more goal line or, or touches within the twenty seven or within the twenty um, than Latavius Murray. Alvin Kamara did have twenty seven. Latavius Murray had twenty three. So I think that will favor Kamara this year, coming um, coming off injury and being fully healthy. So I mean. It is difficult. You know he's up for a contract too, right? He's also up for a contract, so it's, it is Big a contract he's, year. He's, it's contract year. They haven't talked about any negotiations yet, so got to prove it. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, let's move on to our next running back, and that is Ezekiel Elliott, uh, monster running back for the Dallas Cowboys. He hasn't finished outside of an, a running back one in any year. So far, I mean, the lowest he finished, it was 2017. He only played 10 games. And in a PPR league, he finished as the 12th overall running back. Um, But I I, like like we were talking about a little bit ago, he did lose Travis Frederick, um, their center. So the offensive line did take a hit. They do. They did draft Tyler Biotish, uh, who was supposed to be a first round draft pick uh, this year. He was ended up drafted. Drafted in the fourth um, because of some injury concerns. So I think they'll be fine there. Um, and in that much of a high powered offense, grabbing him at four, he's right now, I believe his or his ADP is 5.1. Um, he's going closer at that third spot typically in every draft I've drafted. Um, he's been going behind Saquon and, and, and uh, Christian. Uh, so but but grabbing him, I mean, the upside for him is a running back is the running back one. I mean, he he has that ability. I mean, even his floor, as long as he doesn't, as long as he doesn't get injured, which is something you'll see, sadly happen almost every single year. You have a running back one go down to some half season injury or something. Uh, so, regardless of that, if as long as he doesn't go down, you're gonna get floor upside of. The top top six running backs. Uh, personally, for me, a lot of people are taking him earlier as the two or the three. But something that's scaring me with him is Tony Pollard. Even though he isn't taking a, a lot of share of the running back share away from him, we're talking about the the one, two, three, and four in fantasy football. And just by missing, you know, twenty yards or fifteen carries. You can fall in ranks by like one or two people, even three or four as you get later. And so just by him having another running back who's very solid behind him. I mean, Tony Pollard really showed out last season in, in the attempts that he got. <clears throat> but they did pay Zeke, so he's gonna be there for a while. But just the amount of just the handful of shares that Tony Pollard might steal from him more than last season scares me a little bit. Last year was his first season playing sixteen games. And it was his best finish in a PPR league and his, or I'm sorry, second best other than his, his rookie rookie season. Uh, I mean, in 2018, he had 95 targets for 77 receptions, which was his highest ever. Uh, 2018, it fell to 71 on 16 games. Uh, so for me, that allows Alvin Kamara to take the step above him, knowing that Alvin Kamara last season is coming off of his injury and Zeke's falling down to that four spot for me. But even then, he's still someone who's going to get 300 touches. He's still someone who's going to get 60, maybe 70 receiving targets. He's going to get his touchdowns, and he's an absolute monster when you talk about his actual skill set. So combine that with his opportunity, and he's 
top five running back, no problem. Yeah, and I mean to be honest, I'm not too worried about Tony Pollard. Um, I mean he is he's a great running back. He's great handcuff this year. Um, if Zeke does go down, I mean he's Tony Pollard is very talented. Uh, but I think that the the fact of the matter is that. Zeke is going to get their goal line touches. Um, last year, he finished with 12 on the goal line. He had 61 overall in the in within the red zone, and 18 in the within the five. Um, so, I, I think his touchdown upside is going to be there, and that's going to help him. You know, push push him towards that uh, running or running back four, like we're. we're what we're predicting running back four position. Um, and I, I think that, you know, he's going, he's also going to get his yards. He is capable of breaking those long ones, getting those hurdles, you know, you know what I'm saying? He yeah. can hurdle anybody. Um, but I mean, where you're drafting him, his upside is the wide or is the running number one running back. Um, and I think his floor is like, I mean, we've seen it. We saw it in 2017. He only played 10 games. He still finished as the running back 12. Absolutely. So I mean, it's a it's a no brainer for me there. If you're picking at the fourth position and he falls to you, or you know even if you're at the three, and and you do lean Zeke over Alvin, I mean it it's uh, it's a safe pick. So, but anyways, let's move on to our next pick, and that is Derek Henry, the train, who and himself six foot freaking two two fifty. Oh. Absolute monster of a player in any sort of format uh much better in a standard league he's not a pass catching back so if you're in a standard league you're going to want to fade away from a little bit maybe wait if you're a a later pick a couple later picks you know you're the eight or the nine uh if receivers aren't going you might want to grab him Uh, but in a half point ppr league he i mean he's still going to be getting somewhere around if he gets those touches this year around 1400 yards he should be getting around 13, 14 touchdowns. You're looking at someone who's who's a monster who can easily break away for 99 yards. We've seen him do it before a handful of times. So at, at any point, he can put up nine points just mm-hmm. on yardage plus the touchdown. Uh, so <clears throat> he's going to be getting his touches. He's going to be running through people's faces. He's going to be putting up those stat totals, and that's really what gets you those points. Uh, the Tennessee offense really loves him. They rely they on run him through a him. lot. That's that's their offense. He's you know the 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 focal point of that offense. Yeah, and so you're really expecting him to get his touches. I mean, he's going to get hopefully around 300 touches this season. How many touches do you have? Or actually, how many rushing attempts do you have? For about him? 305. I got him 308. So okay, and yeah, I've got him in for 1500 yards. Me too. So I mean, when you're talking about yardage totals. Touchdown total. If you're getting that many yards, you're getting touchdowns. If you're getting that many touchdowns, you're getting points. Yep. Even without that receiving upside, you've got a baller. Mm-hmm. So Derrick Henry's someone, if if you're down at the five or anywhere lower than that, if you're not thinking quarterback in a super flex league or wide receiver in a in like a three wide receiver or a four wide receiver league, you're grabbing Derrick Henry at that five spot because you know he's going to be someone that Tennessee is going to feed and he can be almost as comfortable as Zeke, Kamara, Barkley, or McCaffrey but doesn't have that PPR upside. And that's the only thing keeping him out of that one through five spot, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean... Or the one through four. Personally, I have him in a half-point PPR. I have him as the running back eight. Um, so there are a couple of uh, three other running backs that I would pick in front of him if I were picking at that five spot. Um, but I mean, he is a solid, he is a solid player. If you're picking at the back end of in half point PPR and he falls to you, um, people pass him up, then I would grab him there. Um, but there personally for me, I do have him at the eight. What do you have him at John in a half point? I actually have him at the five. Um, I have him in for, for 14 touchdowns. Uh, I think that like we were saying, Tennessee's offense relies on him, and amongst him being able to break it out for a big one. Uh, when they get into those goal line situations, they're not asking for anyone else. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I have him for 12. He had 16 uh, rushing touchdowns last year. I have him for 12. I think there will be a little bit of touchdown regression. But like I said, I mean, that number could go up. 
um, because he is he do, they do run that ball through or that offense through uh, Derrick Henry. Um, he opens up the entire offense. But anyways, let's move on to our consensus running back six, and that's Dalvin Cook. Ooh, that's a that's a great offense to be a part of if you're a running back. Absolutely. I mean, last season you had Dalvin Cook actually put up 1,200 yards, uh, and he really didn't even play the last handful of games. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> you only had him playing 14 games last season, and Coach even came out and said that after his initial injury, he was able to play. He was healthy. They just... They held, well, they held they, him for the they playoffs. They held him. They held him for the playoffs. And, I mean, it's something you, re- you really in the NFL only rarely see. Uh, in the NBA, it's a lot more common holding your players for the playoffs and, you know, pushing for that playoff run, especially when you're on a team that has a, barely a shot at it anyways. Well, he's also had a lot of, he's been know, an injury, injury you know, prone. So, drafted holding him for the playoffs you know, is, is expected. Uh, but... If he would have played those 16 games, let's even call it 15, he could have pushed himself up to maybe the the four, the five, the four in a standard and a five in a PBR league. I mean, he could have had an amazing season. Uh, and he's someone who, with the, the loss of Stefan Diggs, you're expecting the Vikings to maybe back off that passing game, even just a slight touch. And even though they were a, a pretty much run-heavy offense, even rely on their running backs more. And even if Dalvin Cook only gets 85% of that running back share of those extra attempts, you're expecting someone who's going to outproduce or even reproduce what he did last season, Uh, especially if he gets a 16-game year. Yeah. He finishes the in a half point in a half point league. He finishes the running back five. So, and like you said, he's on. He was the in the top seven uh, running backs. He was the only. Or I'm sorry, Derrick Henry did miss a game, but um, he missed the most in the top five. He he only played 14. Derrick Henry played 15. Everybody else in the top uh, seven running backs played 16. So he definitely that offense it, it doesn't run through him like it does. Derrick Henry in Tennessee. However, that is a run-first offense. Uh, it does open the passing game up, and they did lose Stephon Diggs, so they may rely on that uh, rushing uh, game or rushing that rushing game uh, uh, more than they did last year. Uh, which you know, as long as Dalvin Cook can stay healthy, you know that then then he will return give you a return on that investment, or at least finish um, in those that top five, uh, top six. Uh, the top six running backs. Um, so if you're drafting Dalvin Cook, though, I do suggest grabbing Alexander Madison in like the ninth round, eighth round, um, just to hand, yeah. just to yeah. handcuff just in case. Yeah, I mean he's someone who showed a little bit of injury risk, and you you kind of want to make sure you're prepared for that. I mean he's missed, uh, you know he missed 12 games back in 2017 just for his ACL. But, which is crazy. I mean, ACL is one of those injuries where when they come back, you're kind of questionable on how they're going to perform. So it was nice to see him come in this year. Uh, he did miss these two games that they're talking about on a left pectoral strain or a left shoulder sprain uh, back in 2015 or back in week 15 of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is a low injury risk injury, uh, re-injury risk. So... I think if anything, it was more just let's keep him out for the playoffs. Yep. And I think it's something they learned that they probably shouldn't worry too much about moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that Madison pickup is going to be crucial because he does have an injury history where he's going to miss games. And when Madison's the lead back, they don't change the game script too much. They're still going to be relying on that running back, and he still he still had his his uh opportunities out there where he actually you know. Yeah. He was he was a solid pickup for a few weeks. Yeah. So if you're going to, like we were saying, if you're going to draft Dalvin, draft Madison later on, definitely just to give you that handcuff. Um, anyways, let's move on to our next running back. That's Austin Eckler, um, consensus running back seven. Uh, he balled out last year uh, in a half point PPR. I mean, last year. Yeah, he balled out. He last balls year. out regularly. Yeah, but, I mean, last year he really took that leap. Um, I mean, before that, the highest he finished was 25th. In a, um, and 
Last year, he finished as the running back six in a half-point PPR league. So, I mean, he, he had 108 targets um, last year, and uh, he did have 92 receptions um, for 900, almost 1,000 uh, receiving yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, he doesn't have the rushing upside. With Melvin Gordon gone, I do believe he's going to get that rushing uh, those more, some more rushing attempts. I have him actually f- around the one seventy uh, three. I believe it's one seventy four. Is uh one um one seventy six. I have him for one seventy six uh, rushing attempts. So for a running back one, it's not a lot, but he is going to get those uh, receiving targets. And I have him down for eighty three receptions, a little less than last year, just because Philip Rivers isn't there and he does dump the ball off a ton. Um, but I think he's going to be a huge part of this offense. And I personally have him finishing as the sixth overall running back in a uh, half point league. So. so personally, I think Austin Eckler is going to be getting the ball more than last season. I mean, last year we sharing that running backfield with Melvin Gordon. And even with him there, he was still, you know, the number, the number two in targets. And the number two in receiving yards. Mm-hmm. And so when you don't have Melvin Gordon there for eight weeks, six weeks, and you can actually play that stat line out for 16, I mean, the coaching staff's still the same. Mm-hmm. You don't have Philip Rivers, you're right, which is why you can't project him to have twice of what he already did. Um, but if you keep that same pre-Melvin Gordon coming back stat line out uh, and just you know take a reasonable amount out because you're not expecting it, Tyrod to be a Philip or even... Justin Herbert to come out there and be Philip Rivers dumping the ball off to him. You're not going to ignore the talent. He's shown that he's someone who can take the ball out of the backfield, run it up your butt, or even catch it and take it to the house. So you're going to get the receptions. You're going to get the targets. You're going to get the yards. Mm -hmm. Touchdowns is the questionable factor for me. Is he going to be reliable in the red zone? I mean, last year he had 27 red zone touches just as a running back. Uh, which put him as 27th in the league, which isn't crazy, isn't great. But, I mean, with 32 teams, you're kind of not doing too bad. Uh, but with this year, as him actually being that number that number one that number one running back, I mean, last year he was, uh, in the first eight weeks before Melvin Gordon came back, he was actually in a PPR league running back six. Uh, so right now, we've got him projected to be the running back seven as a consensus. So mm-hmm. you're if if he can continue that trend that he had at the beginning of the season, you're getting value on that. He's someone who you're going to be happy to pick up at the 7th pick, uh, especially as a, or, I'm sorry, as running back 7. So he's someone who's going to be getting those receptions, those yards, hopefully a handful of touchdowns between rushing and receiving and without Melvin Gordon there, you're getting a lot of opportunity. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, last year he had 132 uh, rushing attempts, I have him down for 176. So that's, you know, 44 I've more. Him, I've got him down for 182. Yeah. Which isn't too much farther off. And uh, I'm actually a little higher on Austin Eckler than you are. Uh, I mean, you've got him at six, and I've got him at my six as well. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, <clears throat> you know, at, when the consensus comes out, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, uh, it, it pushed him down that one spot. Because of Dalvin, or uh, be- no, it's because of the next of- person on the line. You're really hot on this next guy. Yeah, yeah, I am really hot on the next guy. Um, so let's move on to Clyde Edwards-Alaire at eight. Um, I think he's going to have a ton of opportunity. Best running back or best uh, opportunity in a running back position, um, or at least best offense. He's with the Kansas City Chiefs. He's, he's going to have a, a, a monstrous, uh, or I think a monstrous. I have him as the running back, uh, let me see here, running back five, I believe. Yep, I have him at running back five. I don't think he's going to get, you know, the same amount of uh, rushing attempts as as uh, Kareem Hunt did when he was there and when he was a rookie. Um, but I do he's, believe he's going to be involved a lot more in that passing game, which for me is why, you know, is what bumps him up. You know, I have I do have him down for 243 rushing attempts um, and 66 uh, receptions. So, 
he's not going to get you know more than two hundred and fifty uh, rushing attempts. But I, I do think that that passing is what's going to uh, really boost him up in that uh, in the fantasy rankings. So what kills him for me is as much as I'd love him to come in here and be Kansas City's number one back which I think he's going to be, but to hold, hold a timeshare that's going to be so strong that he's going to get 240, 250 carries uh, is the fact that they don't really have any standout backs, but I do think that the three backs they are running in the backfield behind him will take a considerable amount of timeshare out of there. I think Clyde Edwards is going to be more of that pass-catching back, especially like how they use... Uh, <clears throat> some of their other running backs. Uh, but I personally have him in for 212 carries. I know DeAndre Washington is coming in there. You can only expect so much. I mean, any nag that I have against Clyde Edwards is going to be the lack of training camp and lack of opportunity or the lack of time he has in that offense mm-hmm. uh, prior to draft or prior to the, the league starting is uh, I just, I have him for 212 carries in 51, 51 completions. So I don't have him in for, that much of his the offensive share as as you do, which is the only reason he. I mean, he's still pretty high for me. He's still my seven. Yeah. So he, I, I, I understand the offense he's in. I get what he's part of. I just don't think he's gonna have that pure share that you're expecting. Uh, and so as great as I love him, I mean, he's still falling to our consensus number eight. Yeah, and he right now he's going as ADP sixteen point one. So I mean, you're you're getting a value on him. He's he's definitely draftable. Someone you. If you're at the back end of the one, especially or the first round, and or beginning of second, and he falls to you for some reason at the beginning of second round, I mean, walk away with him laughing. So I think he's personally, I think he'll finish in those uh, top five uh, running backs just because of his opportunity, just because of the offense he's in. Um, but I mean, even if he does finish at the eight, you're still you know walking you're away happy with, with that. The, a uh, running back one. Um, but anyways, let's move on to our uh, ninth overall consensus running back, and that is Joe Mixon. John, do you like Joe Mixon this year? Do you so, think that Joe so this, Burrow's going to? This is someone we can be kind of quick on. Joe Mixon is someone that, as as talented as he is, is going to be someone who's just mainly a product of the fact that the rest of his offense is only so talented. And when I say offense, I really mean that offensive line. Uh, you mean you've got talented receivers and quarterback, but that quarterback doesn't have enough time in that pocket to where he's able to pass it to those receivers to get downfield. So he's going to be dumping it off to that running back. I mean, last year he only had a 16% snap share, but he still had uh, 1,138 rushing yards and 287 receiving yards. Only had 35 receptions, so in a half-point PPR league, if he were to get more of those, he would have shot up the rankings. Mm -hmm. But with the reliance that that Bengals offense is going to have on him with what he's shown last season, he's going to get the yards and the opportunities to where he's comfortable finishing in that top nine, top top ten spot. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. And he's shown he can do it before. Uh, 2018, he actually finished at the running back nine um, in a half-point PPR league. So, I mean, he's he's shown, and that was only on 14 games, he's shown he can do it. Um, and I believe, you know, with the addition of, of Joe Burrow, uh, you can argue, you know, whether he's a better quarterback or not, whether it was a, a, a one year or not um, in college for him. But I think he's going to be a better overall quarterback than Andy Dalton was and play to Joe Mixon's strength. Um, and that's why he will finish in that, uh, at that ninth spot, um, at the very least in, um, as a running back. So, um, but anyways, let's move on to our last running back of the day. And that is Miles Sanders. He is our consensus 10, um, in that Philadelphia offense. He showed flashes last year. He finished um, in the top, I believe it was 15th. Yeah, he finished in half point PPR. He finished as, sorry. So in, uh, he finished 15. Uh, So personally, Miles Sanders, someone who's going to be absolutely great. He's going to be getting a huge, huge chunk of that offense. The Eagles have been someone who's been working that timeshare backfield for years, but I think they finally found someone who's going to be 
they're reliable. He gets that pass catching work, so PPR leagues absolutely gets that bonus. Yep. Uh, last year, he put up 509 yards with three tu- receiving touchdowns on 50, 50 receptions. So that bonus right there is going to do a lot for you. Uh, they've dedicated their rushing offense towards him this season. They haven't signed anybody, which they, is great. Exactly. There's a bunch of free agents out there. They could have signed somebody uh, if they didn't trust him. And knowing that they trust him, especially when he had a four and a half yards per carry last season, uh, you give him a handful more attempts and actually put the faith into that offense when he didn't really see much work uh, until uh, possibly, if you want to call it, week three, but really week week six is when they started giving him uh, a larger portion of that offense, and then week 13 is when they actually started really falling into him. Uh, so you're expecting him to come into that Eagles offense and really, really – produce have an opportunity especially when the receiving core is still pretty weak you only have so many guys out there Jalen Rager uh hopefully Carson Wentz still dumps the ball off Miles Sanders and can put up a whole bunch of points for you I'm totally comfortable drafting with that 10 spot definitely I mean personally I have him as the uh, 12th and that that isn't as running back 12 and that isn't because of him per se that's more because there's a couple other guys I like a little bit better um but I mean, he did have 4.6 yards of carry last year, um, and I, he's going to get that full workload, and he is a big part of the passing game. Um, so, I mean, like I said, I I wouldn't be uncomfortable taking him there at the 10th spot. Um, but anyways, that is our top 10 uh, consensus rankings. Uh, John, you got anything to add before we get into the beer of the day? No, I uh, hope you uh, like our rankings there. Yeah, I hope they turn out. So let's get into our beer of the day. Wrong button. That's better. <laughs> As I'm finishing my third. Uh-huh. So anyways, like we said, uh, it is the Purple Haze Raspberry Lager from Abita. Um, brewing company out of Covington, Louisiana, and it was a good one. John obviously enjoyed his, uh, finished three. I finished three as well. It was a nice six pack gone. Um, so (laughs) they saw them that way. Yeah, exactly. So anyways, they were founded in, uh, 1986. So it's been around a bit. Um, they are, like I said, they're from Covington, Louisiana. Um, a pretty cool uh, fact is they actually don't just brew beer. They also oh. brew soda, which is pretty dope. Um, so if if you're going to Covington and you want to go to the brewery, bring the family along. <laughs> they can try the root beer. The root beer. Uh, they've got root beer, cream soda, and cake soda as well. Um, so check those out if you're in the Covington area. Um, if you go to their website, abita.com, that's A-B-I-T-A, you can check out, uh, you know, their events, what's going on, um, where you can find their beer. Um, if you hit the brews tab and go down to Purple Haze, um, there is, you click on that, there is a little um, find, like, find the beer um, there. It is a year-round brew. Well, where do we grab the, where do we pick this up? Publix? Publix, yeah. Yeah, so Publix, Publix for, so for us in the, Florida, southeast area. Yeah, um, Georgia. Yep, check it out. Um, if, if if you don't have a Publix, click on the, uh, go to their website, check out their find the Purple Haze um, uh, button, and uh, then, you know, put in your zip code. It'll tell you where you can pick it up around you. Um and, and one of the cool things, I was reading about this beer, and being that it's a raspberry lager, and there's a restaurant here locally that, that sells a, um, or has that brie pillow, brie cheese pillow, which is really dope, um, appetizer. They were saying on their website that this goes really well with brie cheese. So next time I pick these up, I'm going to get myself some brie cheese. You're going to bring it here? No. Rude. You'll eat it. I want it for myself. Rude. <laughs> so team um, sport. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm kind of I'm a little selfish. So, um that is one of the things they say. It also goes well goes well with chocolate being that it's raspberry. Um and when you when you give that little smell that 
you definitely get that raspberry um, smell to it. Um, it does leave a little bit of a wheat yeasty flavor or smell at the end, but you definitely get that really strong um, smell of raspberry. Same when you taste it. Uh, you said it, it kind of tastes like it's going to be a sour when you drink it because of the raspberry flavor, but it's not. No. So actually, like like you just said, uh, when we first took our first sips, we actually thought, you know, the beginning of the sip, you get that that tartness. You get that feeling like tartness is about to come on. But as soon as you were expecting that bite from tartness, you get this nice little weedy flavor. Uh, it is only a 4.2 ABV, uh, mm-hmm. 13 IBU, so it's super light. Uh, on the, you know, first time we saw this actually from someone, they actually had it measured on the Lovie Bond scale. Ooh, what is that, John? Uh, that's actually the the scale at which they can judge beer's colors oh. uh, and clarity and darkness, lightness. Uh, so this measured at an eight. So it's extremely super, super light. Uh, and it makes up for it because, <clears throat> like you said, it it's super light beer that I didn't even realize I was taking such big sips of. Uh, it's the flavor is mild, but strong at the same time. It, it's strong in that flavor, but it's mild at the point to where it doesn't overwhelm itself and really overwhelm your palate. It's a really mild raspberry flavor that kicks up with that wheat yeasty flavor at the end. Uh, as far as the smell, all you smell is raspberries. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, if I could, if I could have a candle of this, I might actually do it. (laughs) uh uh, it's it's brewed with vanguard hops and it's malted with pilsner and wheat super light very great lager uh personally i might rank this as like a 9.1 for me whoa yeah that's high so and and the reason for that for me at least is i'm a man that likes sours and i'm a man that still enjoys beer and so that lead from a sour to a real beer flavor is really nice for me uh it super smooth as i said uh i'm a huge fan of this i'd definitely buy this again and it's something i'd probably stock in my house sounds like you're going to i might (laughs) yeah so um i I mean personally it's a very good beer i really enjoyed it uh the can art's really dope it kind of gives you that hippie vibe uh the purple haze is in like a lime green um yellowy uh font and then you've got purple and blues throughout the background and swirls and stuff like that um pretty dope but i think i would give it a 7.9 it's really good um not my favorite not my least favorite uh, above average i would say so i mean i definitely anytime i see it anytime you know i'm at the bar and i want something different other than you know typical make ultra or coors light or something like that i would pick this for sure um Definitely takes you on that uh, little little flavor town of uh, of beer. So, but anyways, um, that is it. That is today's episode, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we appreciate you guys watching. Those are our top ten consensus rankings. That is the Purple Haze uh, Raspberry Lager. Uh, John, tell them what they can do to support us. So, if you guys want to, you know, like. Maybe follow, share, subscribe, any of our videos. We would really appreciate it. Uh, If you want to be in contact with any of us, maybe get some fantasy football advice, maybe recommend some beers for us to uh, review here on the podcast or any breweries you want us to get in contact with, make sure to follow, like, and and follow. Follow, like, and subscribe. (laughs) I'm sorry. At our uh, Instagram and Twitter, and it's going to be at the fantasy tap. You can follow. Email us at thefantasytap at gmail.com. Boom. And then uh, make sure you guys uh, tune in. Check out uh, Thursday's episode and see who the rest of our top running backs might be. The last Thank 14. you so much for tuning in today, and we will see you again. We love you guys. Thanks so much.